A hammock doesn't ask for much. It only needs a couple of trees, a breeze, and is happy to drift through the world with us. No dream job, no aspirations, but it still has value. Slacker movies are the hammocks of Hollywood. They're a cozy way to sway through life for a couple of hours. A blissful meaninglessness to wrap yourself inside where the only goal is to be. Look, I'm not trading in my mattress, but like a short vacation, slacker movies are a useful reminder that there's another way to live. Something you take a little from and bring back to your everyday. The old man told me to take any rug in the house. A vial of sand from your favorite beach. We need them. And this generation needs better ones. So here's my pitch for their existence. I won't make the next one, but hey, maybe the long lost Cohen sister is taking a break from writing an ironic review on Rise of Gru and this inspires Gen Z's Lebowski. So let's explore the culture that makes them, what they're missing, where they can go and why we need an update. You're the cab driver and I'm Linklater rambling in the back seat. I want to show you why they matter. What makes a slacker movie is the energy of it. There isn't one job or one city. As long as the character is textured and specific, the plot doesn't make them slackers. The way they move through it does. Most are slightly absurdist, slightly nihilistic, with no greater purpose than to show you how to exist within their world. No greater message than that life's a weird, long, strange trip, so lean into the entropy and enjoy the ride. They follow more fringe characters, ones without huge ambitions or non-traditional ones when they're there. The job is secondary. You don't go out looking for a job dressed like that, do you? On a weekday? Is this so? Take three of my favorites, the original, the ultimate, and the modern slacker. The namesake, Linklater's slacker, meanders through the indie scene of 1990s Austin and basically drifts mid-conversation throughout the city, the camera constantly distracted, following the spirit of the slacker rather than anyone in particular. A JFK conspiracist, a tarot card reader, a TV collector, they aren't the same person but they share an energy that ties the movie together. The Big Lebowski is about, well, a dude. You know, El Dudorino, if you're not into the whole brevity thing. The dude's a bowling-loving slacker that gets mixed up in a kidnapping plot involving an eccentric millionaire with the same name. His name is Lebowski? That's your name, dude. Beach Bum is Harmony Corinne's 2016 fever dream ode to Florida Keys chaos, starring Matthew McConaughey as Moondog. It's the motherfucking old dog. A Hunter S. Thompson-esque poet meandering through a life conspiring in its favor. To a slacker movie, the ultimate form of representation is when someone can just be. Not be the best, not be the worst, simply be. Not productivity machines, not a human cover letter. They're caricatures of alternative lifestyles, a fable to show you there are different ways to go about this whole mess. The dude abides. Imagine a world where everyone's perfect, and a movie about their perfect jobs and perfect teeth. People who wake up with the sun without an alarm where everyone does everything they're supposed to and they journal and they meditate and I'm bored typing this. I'm walking out of that theater. There's no heart, no spirit, no life in a reality like that. It's a boredom that's terrifying in a Stepford Wives, American Psycho, get out kind of way. I'm not moving to that city. I'm not grabbing dinner with those characters. Real humans are flawed weirdos. Our culture needs to protect that. And that's where slackers lazily wander into frame with a half-smoked jay and a thrift shop fit. They appear when it all tips too far in the opposite direction, towards an unsettling sameness. The world's least motivated soldiers in a fight for culture, a culture they're often a bellwether for, pulling on the Overton window for how we look at work and life, preventing us from straying too far into boredom. I write poetry, you little bitch. Society is made up of these pushes and pulls. We go from glamour to grunge, from skinny pant legs to big pant legs. And I'm not saying we should all become slackers, but that slackers serve a role, necessary to the fabric of society. The culture slackers emerge from helps explain their purpose. He's the man for his time and place. He fits right in there. The genre hit its peak in the 90s as an archetype of young Gen Xers, cynical and disaffected, as post-Reagan conservatism and free market evangelists seemed to be winning. Manufacturing shipped overseas, greed became a national pastime, and the social contract was broken, so the generation pushed back and said, Oh, fuck it. Oh, fuck it. Yes, that's your answer. That's your answer to everything. If there's no promise of this future we were sold, might as well do your own thing. Slackers represented an embrace of the drift. None of it's about a failure to launch. The dude claims to be an author of the Port Huron Statement. A real 1960s political manifesto from student activists. You ever heard of the Seattle Seven? Mm. 
That was me. And whether flawed or not, there's a half-baked philosophy to these fully baked characters. I mean, look, I could tell you that I've been trying to uncover the abyss beneath my illusory connection with the world. I could tell you that it's all written in the stars. I could tell you that I'm a reverse paranoid. I'm quite certain that the world is conspiring to make me happy, all three of which are true, but it's really a little simpler than that. I like to have fun, man. But the real slacker spirit seemed to get lost in a Y2K bunker with the new millennium. It twisted into offshoot genres and was eclipsed by frat comedies. If the 90s were a disillusionment, the 2000s were fear masked with a false optimism. They were an underlying rage and cultural confusion coming out of 9-11 into the Iraq war. That and a little desperation mixed in after the financial crash leaves you with a decade of man-child comedies. A successor to the slacker, but spiritually different. They swapped the bong for a keg and lost the idea of the slacker being principled. When it became unpatriotic to speak out, the ideology lost its way and slackers became the butt of the joke. Your revolution is over, Mr. Lebowski! Condolences! But I see the pendulum swinging back. And post-COVID, we're in a perfect position for the next wave of slackers. With the rise of anti-work, a reconfiguring of what labor's role should be, remote work and panic CEOs ghostwriting op-eds against remote work, Gen Z and millennials are questioning the social contract again. In China, the lying flat movement is rising in response to a culture of overwork. And in the US, everything's fine. There's no war in bossing, say. Look at retired people. So many in the US start drowning in ennui the second their life doesn't revolve around work. In a world almost unrecognizable from the 90s, we need art to show us new ways to exist. Don't let us down, Moondog. We're rooting for you. A lot of slacker movie critiques are understandably financial. Are they always rich? No, but even the first draft of The Dude had him as the heir to the Rubik's Cube fortune. Is it harder to be a slacker now? 100%. I think in the 90s, the minimum wage was closer to a living wage, so people could eke out an existence in more creative ways. They're still here, but society relegates them more and more to the underworld. Sean Baker explores this well. His stuff's less about slackers entirely, but there's definitely a crossover in how the energy comes out in his films. Today, more of us are simply trying to survive. And that does an insidious thing to culture. It starts to erode until we're only showing stories about rich people with awful taste and sterile houses that look like memories have never been made inside of them. I think if we understand the joy of the slacker as a fable on the importance of letting us all simply be in the society, it'll bleed into other areas. When we accept slackers and that everyone has value, it disrupts the meritocracy myth and stops us seeing wealth as morality. And then we understand that clerks and delivery drivers and all of us are worth more than we're getting. And I don't think slacker movies are flawless. I do think that they can be dangerous in too big of a serving size. They can run the risk of being too selfish or individualistic in the wrong hands. So be careful drifting around too long in the malaise. Sometimes it sneaks hold like the quicksand early 2000s media kept warning me about. There's also a huge lack of slackers that aren't white dudes. The original link later shows some interesting feminine slackers, weird tarot card parking lot art exhibits, and trying to sell Madonna's pap smear, but on a macro level, we're missing out on some really interesting stories out there. We need the joy they bring, the interesting characters, the originality of that independent spirit, but we also need a modernized version of them. Greta Gerwig has the potential to deliver one for us, Frances Ha circles it, Lady Bird dips her toe in, so I think she's closing in on a new Big Lebowski at some point, but think of how few minority voices get to be slackers on screen. I want more Middle Eastern slackers like Rami, black slackers, Asian slackers, I just don't want perfect little self-improvement ads. Representation means flawed existences too. I don't want movies full of perfect people. It limits our cultural imagination. To say minority voices are only valuable if they're some world famous athlete, scientist, or a weird superhero is limiting. Real representation comes when we let people on screen simply be. When we show people just out here existing. And what do you do, Ern? Nothing. Art needs to remind us how to fuck off once in a while and do nothing. To see life like a slacker does, something to flow through. And when you see the world in that way, you start noticing the forks in your life. The small decisions that can change the energy of your day and slowly your life. You start to realize the slackers are already out there. Drifting into the bar free of inhibitions, truly dancing before strolling back into the night and onto the next side quest. 
relaxed in the belief that the universe is conspiring in their favor. It's just a part of the adventure. I say this knowing it's a balance, but our current reality isn't a healthy one. And with more slacker movies, our culture is reminded of alternative ways to live. They let us indulge in the fantasy and expose us to the fringe so we know our options before we drift back to reality with a souvenir and a new perspective. Thanks for watching. If you like this, please subscribe for more video essays on the absurdity of it all and the art that makes it worthwhile. And let me know what other niche nonsense we should dive into next.